Hi, everybody. Uh, tough, tough uh, spot uh, afternoon, so let's see if we can wake everybody up. Before I start, I have a special request. So um, I'm very excited. My dad came to watch us, uh, watch me speak. Big round of applause to my dad. <laughs> Finally, you can see what it is that I'm, I'm working on. So um, business travel sucks. And all of us get it. We are all business travelers. I'm sure you either travel to come here or you travel, you're based in Israel, you're traveling out of Israel to do your business. The way companies book and manage travel today, in 2019, this way sucks. There are two main categories to book and manage business travel. The first one, roughly 40% of the market, is called managed travel. This is using travel agencies like American Express, here in Israel, Amsalem is a big one, Disney House, etc. The reality is nobody likes them except maybe the CFO of the company. 50% of all trips, this is according to the Global Business Travel Association, 50% of all trips in companies that have contracted the travel agent are leaking out. These are travelers that are using uh, Booking.com and Expedia and other vacation or, or uh, consumer travel websites to book their business travel because they don't like the agent. It's inefficient, it's expensive, it's very limited in inventory, it's just a very bad experience. That's 40% of the market. The remaining 60%, or I should actually say 80%, because it includes half of the 40% from before, 80% of the market is unmanaged, meaning that companies tell employees, go ahead and book travel any way you want. You get access to maybe good product, good inventory, but now you're finally looking at yourself as a travel agent, wasting a lot of time trying to compare 12 different websites on average, and creating a huge mess of administration for your company in how do you get the payment done correctly, the invoicing. It sounds boring, but it's not. It's one of the highest cost items in your P&L that you should be able to control, and you can't. Plus, you have a huge issue of support. When 200 websites and direct uh, airlines and hotels become your suppliers, who guarantees a consistent level of support to your travelers when something goes wrong? And in travel, everything could go wrong and everything does go wrong. Well, the answer is nobody. Nobody guarantees this level of support because they have a very inconsistent, by definition, very inconsistent level of support between one airline and another airline, between one hotel and one um, online travel agent somewhere in Eastern Europe, for example. So we are solving this problem in a very big market. We're talking about 1.2 trillion with a T, 1.2 trillion dollars spent globally on business travel. And the number or the figure that when we saw it blew our mind, and that's what, why we decided to create the company and focus on small and medium-sized uh, businesses, especially in Europe, is this number uh, here on the bottom uh, right. More than 80%, 80, more than 80% of the volume of business travel in Europe is done in companies that have less than 500 employees. So we're thinking about enterprise software as you have to start small and you have to go to McKinsey or J&J &J as customers. In our industry, they are the small niche. They are 17% of the market. So I'm leaving them to American Express and I'm focusing on a small niche of 80%. Nobody knows how to serve SMEs in our industry, and we are the first ones who are building and leading this solution with technology and service combined together. Our mission is, uh, as one of our dear advisors, Fritz Demopoulos, who started an amazing business in, in our industry in China, says, uh, he says it's a Disneyland mission. Uh, and we're proud of a Disneyland mission. Our, our mission is to make business travelers happy while giving this control and visibility to the companies. And this, this, this tension between um, what the travelers want and what the companies, the CFOs need, and then we're bridging this tension. That's our mission. We're building the first consumer-grade platform. Consumer-grade is a badge of uh, quality in this day and age. It used to be enterprise-grade, it became consumer-grade. So we have a consumer-grade platform where you do all-in-one your business trips, and we're very happy to be partnered with NOAA as an official travel partner, so all of the attendees and speakers of NOAA can enjoy this platform, book flights, hotels, car, uh, rail, we have very, very deep inventory, for example, regional Deutsche Bahn in Germany. So that's a very, very powerful platform, a very unique platform, uh, I should say. As I mentioned, we have different personas, and the complexity of the system is that we have to please the travelers. We also have to please the admins, those who book trips, the assistants. We also have to please the CFOs and those in charge of the budget. And each one of them have different sets of needs, problems, and pain points that we are solving for all of them. So this is really three products in one that we're building uh, for three very different personas. The company is unique in the sense that we have the largest bookable inventory in the world. 
So we have everything that the travel agent has, um, the GDSs of the world, we have that. We are an official YATA licensed travel agent. Believe me, it's tough to get this license, uh, almost as tough as getting a banking license. It took us a year plus to just get the license to be able to get access to this inventory. So we have it. We are also partners of Airbnb and Booking.com and Expedia and Skyscanner and Kayak. So they sell their inventory through us, which makes us, by definition, the largest uh, bookable inventory in our industry because we have the B2B side and also the B2C side aggregated in our platform. Everything is bookable. We never punch you out on another website. You can finish the transaction, get the invoice from Travelperk. We've been growing very fast, so uh, as you can see by the, by the nice blue line, I didn't put any numbers, so you can guess the numbers. But uh, we are, this year we'll be handling hundreds of millions of, hundreds of, millions of dollars in uh, sales, um, mostly European-based, but also global, US, Israel is a big market for us as well. So we're selling it all over the world. And then our customers really love what we've built. So the, the first cohorts, those who've been with us since 2016, and let me tell you, back in the day, we didn't have a backend, so I was booking on Skyscanner. You would book a flight, and I would, true story, I would wake up in the, mo in like the middle of the night, we get a, a pager duty, and I would go and book on Skyscanner your trip for you, uh, and I had a template in my email to make it look like it was sent by a machine, but I was actually putting the numbers. So we've, we've, we've gone a long way since then, um, and I'm happy to say that the customers, even from back in the manual days, are still with us. So we have uh, less than 1% uh, GMV churn, or logo churn on a monthly basis, and if you actually take expansion into account, we have negative churn with our existing core. So very strong core behavior, very predictable uh, process in how we ramp it and sell it, and that's why we, um, we went and, and raised a bunch of money so we can grow even faster. So we raised so far $75 million, led, the last round was led by Yuri Milner and Chinovic, and then we did before that rounds with our friends from Target uh, Global, with uh, Felix Capital, Spark led the A round, so really good bunch of investors, mainly from Europe, but also from the US. And that's it, that's Trapper. Thank you very much for your time. Have a nice conference. <laughs>